Hi you guys, Dave My Max 6 at Ghost in Venice and the Mecca and this is episode 2 of Muscle Beach TV for Muscle Insider and I got my good friend Brad as a second guest, very happy to have you Brad, welcome to the show. Thank you very much Dave, I appreciate being on with you. This is, uh, man we go way back, this is the first time we did the show, it was a few years ago now. That's been about 4 years. Has it been 4 years? Yeah, since, <laughs> since that Max Muscle. On, <laughs> on the, the couch, couch. Yeah. yeah on the couch. Well I'm really glad to have you as a second guest. And just so you know, the first guest was Miss Fitness Olympia Oksana, so yeah, that says a lot about her. you. I can't her, so. <laughs> so Brian, I really wanted to have you today. Uh, this is your um, uh, the beginning of your second year as a pro, and I wanted to kind of catch up a little bit and see, um, you know, how's it going this year and how does it compare to the first year? You, you're doing great. You, I follow you on, on social media, and uh, you recently posted actually some pictures of you just getting your pro card yeah. versus now. And it's funny because when you see people, you, can, you can't take have to kind of forget what they right where what, they came from right yeah. and so you know, I saw those people like oh my god you know so I say I gotta have Brad on the show and talk about uh, how's the second year of the pro and, and uh, so tell me a little bit how how this year is going for you and how does it compare to the first year as you were competing last year for the first time well technically this is still my first year because it's going into the 2015 Mr. Olympia qualification series mm, okay so I'm still technically a rookie um, you know it's been an interesting year because I wasn't even going to compete at this point this year. My first show was actually going to be Vancouver, which was the end of July. Um, so I'd still be prepping and stepping on stage in 10 days for my first show. But um, right now I'm, uh, I'm getting ready for show number four. Um, it'll be my seventh show total as a pro. Wow. I'm shooting for Sacramento. Um, you know, after Chicago, I was just, my body was beat up um, physically. First time kind of mentally ever really? during prep. Just, uh, you know, I had no consistency because I did three shows, you know, kind of back to back to back. So losing out on money with clients and, and really being run down and, and not be able to spend time with my wife and things like that, you know, it kind of took a toll on me. So uh, we decided to skip Vancouver and just shoot for Sacramento. Um, I can get a little bit of normalcy back in my life. I'm an extremely regimented person, so when I'm out of my routine, it really throws me off. So. I get the next four weeks to try to make things normal and get back in my groove and hopefully bring a better package. Um, you know, it's one of the things I was somewhat frustrated about. Uh, yeah, I jumped into the cow and I, and I did okay um, getting third there, but it wasn't my best and it's not what I could have been. You know, I think back and I say hindsight's 2020. I wish I just stuck with my guns and shot for Vancouver. I would have been a lot bigger. Um, you know, could have brought up some weak areas a little more and, you know, would have had a pretty fresh look there. But um, you know, coming away with a third there and then a fifth in uh, Dallas, you know, got me some points. Right. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's just, it's a tough race this year. Yeah. You know, last year guys got in the Olympia on like five and seven points. I'm at 11 and I'm tied for third right wow. now with four other people. Wow. And there's a couple of people fighting on our heels. So, um, you know, I'd hope to kind of just let off the gas a little bit and cruise into the Olympia, but it's not a chance I'm going to get in for sure so I gotta keep competing so this is really interesting um, so this year it seems to be um, from year to year I mean because last year you had a terrific you know first year I keep telling you that you were the rookie of the year you laugh at me time but I thought you did so well and it's funny because you really really someone that's um, you're not full of yourself you're very realistic and if anything I think you downplay yourself quite a bit you know so you always look at people like Sean and and people around you that have accomplished so much already and you always sort of compare yourself to them but I thought you did great last year and uh, and, and you look was, was unbelievable and so I figured you know this year is gonna be a good year for you but when you're telling me one thing you're telling me is that sometimes it gets to be too much you also told me that you're someone who really enjoys competing you don't really like the offseason you like being in shape you like the regiment you like the, the process so talk about um, is it a fine line? Can you actually go too far? Is everything else around that's making it difficult? Uh, you know, such as, of course, a married life and, and yeah. the clientele, the business, all that stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's the, you know, the external stuff that makes it right. more difficult than anything. Not the prep. Right. I can, I can handle the dieting and the training and everything else. My body's a little beat up. You know, I got a shoulder and tricep issues and I'm working around. But um, really, like you said, if it's trying to manage a business, trying to, you know, make money. I don't have a sponsorship. So everything I do is coming out of my pocket. Yeah. Um, you know, we had some things going on with the housing situation and oh, yeah. one of our dogs is, you know, she's old and she's starting to get dementia and, you know, so it was just a lot of other stuff that kind of built up that we're trying to deal with 
and we're also trying to build a future together. Yeah. You know, we had some concepts, some ideas that yeah. me and my wife wanted to do, yeah. and we keep hitting stumbling blocks and roadblocks on that. So, honestly, more the frustration of this year isn't so much, you know, competitively. I, I haven't been my best yet. I haven't beat my Fregno look yet. And for me, that's all I care about. Right. You know, I've told you time and time again, I never thought I'd place top five as it is, but as long as I beat myself each time I step on stage, then I'm content, and I haven't beaten my best. I've gotten better at each show so far this year, but I haven't beaten my best. So that's kind of what frustrates me uh, more than anything. But more than that, I just kind of somewhat feel stagnant because we have hit so many roadblocks in some of the projects that we're trying to work on. Mm -hmm. So that's more frustrating yeah. than anything. It's hard. It's hard to let, not let it affect, of course, your 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 job, which is basically bodybuilding. That's your main focus, you know, of course. So uh, I know you like you enjoy training your clients and, and everything else that you're doing business-wise. But really, the main focus is, and you do also tons of uh, commercials. You go audition all the time. Every time yeah. we talk, you're like, today we weren't sure if we we're going to go to shoot because I got me having a call back. So yeah. you have a I lot going on. Day, so. You have a lot of balls up in the air, you know, all yeah. the time. So, but is it safe to say that? That's also what, what's keeping you sane, the competing, the routine, you, you love that, right? I think so, I mean, the fact that I'm always on the go, um, I'm never sitting around thinking about things. Yeah. I don't even have a chance to cheat on my diet because I'm not in one place long enough to do it. <laughs> so it, in, in a way, it does keep me focused, and that's how I am. Yeah. This past Saturday was the first time that I had probably a five hour chunk of time with really nothing to do. Wow. And I sat there in my house and I was like, my wife was at a show down in San Diego supporting a friend. Were you bored? I was bored out of my mind. So I was like, you know, I'm going to walk down the street and get a 90 minute massage at some cheap Thai place because at least I'm stuck on a bed there for 90 minutes and can't move. You know, so I, I, as much as I want downtime, I don't do well with downtime. Yeah. Yeah. I always like to be on the go. Yeah, you're, you're a worker. You're uh, you remind me of Jay a lot. It's, he's always telling me, oh, I'm traveling too much. I've got this going. This. But whenever he's got time, yeah. then he's bored. He twirls his finger. I got to do something. You yeah. know. So I think yeah. you guys. I think it's that blue collar mentality. You know, from Boston, New England guy. You, you, Derek. You know, Jose. You all have the same sort of mentality, and you like to stay busy. You like to stay productive. You like to, you know, go to bed at night think, okay, I've done some things today. You yeah. know, it was a productive day. So, um, all right. So. Right now, we're shooting for San Francisco, right? The Sacramento. Next, Sacramento, okay. Yeah. And, and after that, is, is are you hoping that, oh, we're all so close to the Olympia. We're like, what, how many weeks from the Olympia? Uh, we're 10 weeks out. No, oh, so nine weeks. Nine so, weeks. So that's it. I mean, it's pretty much rolling up to the Olympia if you qualify, and that's it. We're off to the races. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, like I said, there's a bunch of people biting on our heels, so, you know. I'm pretty sure if, you'll make it. If, if I can pull out, you know, a fourth place in Sacramento, that'd be amazing. Um, that gives me enough points to tie for first with Branch at this point. Wow. Um, I know Branch is competing. Um, I think I think he's actually doing Sacramento from rumors I heard. Really? Um, so, you know, him and uh, Victor are the two ahead of us. So yeah. it'd be nice if they actually stepped on stage and won. You know, we could slide up a little bit. Wow. But, you know, a, a part of me says shut it down and, you know, get bigger, focus on next year, because I really haven't had an offseason since I turned pro. Yeah. Um, but the other part of me says, you're this close, just keep going. You know, for everybody that didn't think I should have turned pro the way I turned pro by getting second in nationals, for myself, you know, even for my own affirmation that I'm, that I'm doing this right, to qualify as a rookie for the Olympia is, is huge. You know, I, I know I won't crack top 10, but it's, it's such a huge accomplishment, you know, considering that when I stepped on stage at Phoenix last year, I never thought I could ever crack top five at a, at a pro show period you know so it's that's what's keeping me driving right now and i was gonna that was gonna be the next question actually how i was gonna say how great would it be that literally you get your pro car in the very next year you go to the olympia that would be an unbelievable feeling yeah i mean it's you know it's an awesome opportunity and, wow. and i'm glad that you know i did the shows the way that i did to yeah. accumulate the points and you know it's i'm not getting in by winning and a lot of people see that as a failure and don't think you should be on the olympia stage unless you win but um, no, you me, earn it. Trust me. The way they have the points set up now, when you're there, you earned your place. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot easy. of shows, there's a lot of points to be racked up, and um, you know, there's a lot of better bodybuilders out there than me that just haven't competed. So you know, that's that's the difference. I'm just gonna yeah. keep on grinding yeah. like I did as an amateur. Yeah. Just keep showing up, and, and something's gonna happen eventually. Yeah. Because some people have been pros for years, decades, and they've never been on the Olympic stage. That's many, their dream. You they know? haven't even done as many shows as I have <laughs> <laughs> in less than a year. So is it the same? But by the time you retire, you may have as many shows as Miguel Sarchev and all these guys. I don't know. Dexter. <laughs> Those are <laughs> tall shoes to fill. <laughs> I, I would love to say yes, but uh, if I can have we'll Dexter's see. longevity, that'd be amazing. Yeah. I think I trained too hard and too stupid though. <laughs>
<laughs> that's what Chris says, by the way, that you're too stupid. I know. To be, but he says it's a good thing. It's a good yeah. thing. He says that's a good way. Brad is, is very stupid. He's perfect for him body only. Yeah. All right, Brad. So thank you so much for for being on the show today. I can't wait to see what's gonna happen with you next. I'm, you have a very exciting career, and and you like you know the, the pros of the old days where they competed you know consistently throughout the years, and it's great to see you progress, and it's great to make you uh, see you progress. I can't wait to see you on the Olympic stage. It's, I'm gonna be really happy for you. And man, we've been. I've known you for what, four or five years, four years now, yeah. and this is great, you know, so I'm very excited for you, I'm very happy, thanks for being on the show as usual. Thank you very much, Dave, and thank you, Muscle Insider. All right. And I tell you guys, this is Muscle Beach TV number two with IPB Pro Brad Rowe, and we're out.